Now, here comes the music. Hey, hey everyone, it's Buddy with TBM Productions and the DJ Roundtable. It's eight o'clock. It's Tuesday night. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable, uh, second episode up on Twitch. And you're watching the rebroadcast either on YouTube or on Twitch. Either way, um, I'm waiting for a few other people to come in here. Yeah, usually they're here earlier, but uh, unfortunately, uh, it is what it is. And it may just be me for a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, as you know, the DJ Roundtable is a forum for us as DJs to talk about what is going on, what's happening, and uh, talk about our gigs and equipment and gear, and uh, hopefully answer some questions you guys are. If you're watching on YouTube, you can watch this live on Twitch. If you go to TBM Productions underscore buddy, TBM Productions underscore buddy on Twitch, you can then follow us on Twitch, and you can follow the show. Plus, I do DJ on Twitch. Um, as for fun and enjoyment, I do music videos. So that's the other thing as well. But uh, hopefully you uh, out there, all your fellow DJs, will see the show and come over and watch on Twitch. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we try to answer a lot of questions. We were doing it on Instagram for a long time. And uh, now we're switching over to Twitch. So that way we have a, a little better way of doing things because we're doing it through Zoom and uh, having fun with Zoom here. So and make it easier for other DJs to get in here so we can have more than just the four people we could have on Instagram. Instagram, we're going to have four people for a show, <clears throat> myself and three others. And the downside on that was a lot of times I wanted to have more than just, you know, four people on there. I wanted to have five or six. So we're going to be working on that to get that going with that. A uh, couple of things uh, I had this past week, and I actually had two weddings this past week and one Friday and one on Monday. Uh, the Friday wedding uh, was out West and the Monday, I can call it afternoon wedding, was downtown Chicago in the loop, right off of Michigan Avenue, uh, right in the heart of Chicago. And uh, you're basically two, three blocks away from Lake Michigan. Uh, the wedding on Friday, we were, um, basically in the middle of cornfield right next to uh sycamore illinois at a great beautiful uh venue chapel in the pines and i can i one of the things i want to talk about today is uh staff at venues and when trace and i go to a venue we always look at the staff members as partners uh it, it's a key partnership between us and those staff members, be it uh, the facility manager, be it servers, be it room captains, even the people we don't see, the chefs, the, the, the cooks, the people cleaning dishes in the back, uh, bar backs, uh, the bartenders, we may have a lot of interaction, but it's still a key intricate part of everything going on because we want to make sure that we follow house rules and house policies that our customers can enjoy and have fun not worry about things, but also we follow the rules of the facility. Uh, a lot of facilities have a lot of different rules. They have a lot of regulations uh, for themselves to protect themselves. And we, when we go into a place, uh, the two of us, or we have staff members with us, our employees, we always try to make sure we follow the policies. Now, sometimes those policies do conflict what we need to do. And we try to work with the venue and try and work with the people there to make sure that we can either figure our work around or something. Because sometimes some facilities, they, I, I don't know what it is, uh, they like to stick DJs into a corner or put them into a, a bad area. And it's like, why do you do this? And well, we always, we've always done this. We always did this. We always had this. And it's like, well, if you always done this, you always had this doesn't mean it's right. It can mean it's it's wrong. And it can mean that it's something that um, I'm just asking a question for someone and got an answer. So, but 
it is one of the things that we try to very heavily um, look at how can we make sure we have a good relationship with the facility, do our job and not have to worry about uh, getting in the way of either them or get in the way of, of anything. And that's the last thing we wanna do. We wanna get in the way of anything or anyone. We want to make sure that we, we do what we need to do to take care of our customer. And most facilities, I would I'd probably say probably 90% of the facilities, they want to do what's best for the client. Uh, one of the big things is, is reviews. Uh, reviews are huge. You know, social media today with between Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, so forth, so on. You go down all our lists is very, influ uh, very, very, influential on what is going on. And there's a lot of people that go on and talk about stuff and they talk about their events. And they talk about what happened. And you know, I mean, I've done tons of good logs on YouTube and you're out here watching on Twitch. You can go over on YouTube, TBM Productions, DJ One on YouTube and watch those gig logs and so forth. And I would put some more up on YouTube as well uh, soon. Uh, just haven't had a chance really to make a lot of video at the Weddies because we've been busy. I'm hoping maybe this weekend record some video of this coming uh, wedding, and this should be a, a, another real nice one. The, um, the the thing is that you know most venues, most managers, and most staff want to do what's best. You do run into those managers who have done the same thing a billion years in a row and they don't want to look at any other way of doing things and uh sometimes it is um frustrating because i need to do certain things or do this or do that and i'm kind of blocked by the facility sometimes and i run into it every so often and a lot of times i i, I look at it is probably because they've had other djs in there which were were not good when they were bad djs they were uh, people who um, basically just didn't uh, do the right things, didn't follow your policy procedures, didn't uh, uh, you know follow what the customer wanted, the, the client wanted, um, was really bad. Um, people get dance, people don't, no one had fun, no one enjoyed themselves, or they you know basically were just. Uh, a bad DJ, and that's not what you know we are. But again, if you, I, I, I guess, if you're tainted enough times by someone doing that, uh, you're, you're going to, you know, you're, you're going to say, hey, you know what? This is this is something that I don't want to have. So I'm going to put policies, procedures in, in place, so this never happens again not thinking that this is a one-off dj or perhaps a couple times it's, it's probably some bad djs or djs who don't understand and one of the things i, I love talking about is I, I love the round table here i love doing this with people and having interaction and talking but the other thing also i like is dish jockey news i do a shout out to them i, I do it all the time because they are a wealth of knowledge uh there's a lot of great djs on there brian s red howie Darkstar. i can go down a whole entire list of people on there, uh, Mr. Chan Young. It, it's 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 a whole entire list of people on there that give all these information to make you a better DJ. <clears throat> and some things I have used, and some things I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll try it and see what happens. It didn't work for me. That's fine. But as a business owner, I always feel you should. Uh, one of the many things you should do, I always feel that you should be improving your product improving what you do yeah getting new lights or a new speaker or a new controller or new this new that. that's great that's pizzazz but also uh, procedures and policies that you're doing doing due diligence making sure you go through everything go do i need this do i don't need this um did i bring the right stuff with me did i bring gaffer tape did i bring the right did i bring some extension cords that deferred on un unforeseen things did i bring the, the right speakers, are they too big, they're too small. Um, and, you know, I see DJs all the time 
Uh, and we talk to DJs all the time that sometimes, you know, they, they have the mentality of, uh, you know, I have everything right. I have everything here. And now it's maybe like, oh, oh, I forgot this, forgot that. That's why you have policies and procedures in place. So that way you don't have the wrong equipment or you don't have the wrong parts or you didn't forget this, forget that. It's a lot of stuff like that you have to look at and go, okay, what, what do we do now? What, how can we do this? How can we overcome this? How can we fix this? And that's why you need to have you know, policies in place. You know, everybody's got price, everybody's worried about this, but having your house in order before you do things is an important thing. Being organized is an important thing. You know, Tracy and I work on organization all the time. Uh, thank God I have her because she is more organized than I am. Uh, and that's why she does a coordination time management side. Uh, but the thing is, we both work on it very heavily. We make sure stuff is done in a timely manner. We make sure that we go through those lists of things and make sure stuff is done beforehand. Uh, we try to you know, leave ourselves notes and say, hey, this needs to be done on this day, this needs to be done that day, so forth, so on. So we know what stuff needs to be done, when it needs to be done, how it needs to be done, who needs to do it, so forth, so on. We don't want to have, uh, we, we don't want to have to say, oh man, you know, we didn't think this through. Now, are we always right? No, we make mistakes, we're human, like everyone does. You learn about your mistakes and then you make policies and procedures and you think things through so you don't make that same mistake twice. And make a mistake once, it happens, we're human, we all do it. Make a mistake, same mistake twice, okay, fine, great, maybe you didn't learn the first time, second time's gonna be, uh, you know, you need to learn by then. If you keep doing the same mistake over and over and over again, and you're not learning by your mistakes, then you need to reevaluate what is going on, what's happening. With everything that you do as a DJ, and as we do as a DJ, we always, 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 try to do our best. We put our best foot forward and we try to make sure that our policies, our procedures, everything you do is as close as possible to perfect. Are we perfect? No, we're, we're human, we, I get, like, we make mistakes. But going back to the facilities, I always you know, make phone calls. Uh, I always talk to the facility. Uh, I always tell them that, you know, Tracy's your point of contact when we get there on scene, uh, when we get there, at the, at the venue, Tracy's the one talking to whomever I talk to. If it's, you know, I'm gonna throw names out there, just generic names. If it's Nancy I talk to, or if it's Mark I talk to at the facility, Tracy's the one, I still introduce myself. I still say hi and stuff like that. So they know me, because they talked to me initially, but they know Tracy is the one in charge. Tracy's the one going to work with them, partner with them. Uh, Tracy's the one going to handle the time management. And she's going to handle the photographers. When photographers and videographers come up to me, I always tell them the same thing. You know, hey, great. Nice to meet you. Uh, we had some great photographers and videographers this past weekend. Um, and the thing is, I always tell them, talk to Tracy. She's the, she's the one coordinating time management. You need to have someone in charge of certain aspects. And that's why, again, partnering with the facility and having that partnership with all your vendors. You're, it, it, it's all like fellow teammates. And we just had the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. So myself is a White Sox fan. Um, of course, is going to root for the American League. <laughs> um, we're going to have, you know, there's National League and American League. Uh, Tracy's a Cubs fan, so she always uh, roots for Cubs uh, players. I always root for Sox and Sox players on the, on the, on the All-Star but here's different guys from different teams coming together. Yeah, they do a little practice beforehand, but they're coming together and usually they're adversaries. And here you get to work together to get this done. And it's similar to that in doing a wedding because you're showing up. Maybe you have talked to the photographer beforehand. It's not a bad thing giving a phone call to the photographer and videographer beforehand, talking to them and say, hey, you know, this is, you know, this is Buddy from TBM Productions. Uh, hey, I know you're this weekend, you're doing a, a such and such wedding. Um, is there anything that you need from me? How can I help you? I, you know, your point of contact is going to be Tracy. She's a coordinator. Uh, she's a time manager. Uh, but the thing is, that, what do you need from us? Do you need anything from us? Uh, when they get there on scene, 
Okay, do you need power? That's that's one of the things that one of the things I always ask photographers and videographer. Do you need power? I have extra power on my power strip. I have extra outlet open. I, you know, having that extra area there so people can come into and look at it and go, hey, okay, um, I need an outlet or hey, I need this. I need to charge my phone. Whatever I need to do to help them out to make their lives easier, sometimes will help me how they want to connect. If they want to connect into our audio system, you know, sometimes if we're doing ceremonies, hey, could I connect on to your, uh, your system? Sure. You want RCA, you want XLR, you want quarterage, how do you want to connect? And then go from there. Uh, just like in our, you know, su- uh, Monday, I'm sorry, I'm getting my days confused here. Monday's wedding, uh, which is a videographer. And that's one of the things I asked. I go, do you want to go off our board or you want to capture audio off your own? He's like, I'll capture audio by own, small wedding reception. And I don't need to, you know, connect on your board because we're not doing a ceremony. I'm like, not a problem, dude. But if you need anything, ask. He's like, hey, can I charge? I need a battery charged up. I'm like, oh, hey, you got to plug it in. But during, this is during dinner, he plugs it in, charging up the battery. Great, no problem. And I have no problem doing that because again, it's a teamwork. Going back to the facility, I'm gonna go back to there. <laughs> that is the same thing we do with the facility. What does a team, what does what that team of the facility need from us? Does the room captain, uh, they're gonna rely on a DJ and say, okay, fine, great. We're having dinner at, on my list at six o'clock, um, they want to get the food out fresh, hot and ready and get people fed. And we wanted to facilitate that as well. So, okay, dinner's at six. We might want to, um, hey, what's up, Adrian? We want to have um, oh, introductions probably at 640, you know, get people together at like 638, 635, introduce them at 640. Do you know introductions? That's you know five minutes there. Okay, speeches for a few minutes. Prayer, get that done probably in, in 10, 15 minutes. And if we're a little early, if they have dinner ready, if they're doing salad or soup, they may be able to get that out a little earlier, a minute or two early. And that's all coordination. That's all time management because you have so much time for dinner, you have so much time for cocktail, and you want to maximize the dance floor as much as possible for time. And when you see people, you know, at venues, running around and stuff like that, you always look and go, okay, why is, why is dinner taking so long? Why is this? Well, how was time management handled? On our end, we try to handle it very, very heavily um, to make sure that we're on time. So again, we have a loose timeline from a couple. Hey, you know what? Uh, dinner, you know, cocktails from five to six. Dinner's supposed to be set, uh, at six, but never is because it's usually like 620, 625. Because the facility wants to have that time, give time, 10, 15, 20 minutes for introductions, for speeches, prayer, so forth, so on. <clears throat> and that, again, is an important thing. We always, again, partner with the facility and see what they have on their timeline because their timeline is different than our timeline a lot of times. And we kind of go between the two and go, okay, fine, great. The couple said, okay, dinner is from five to six. Oh, no, I'm sorry, cocktails from five to six. Dinner's at six o'clock, actually it's 620. So we got everyone out of, you know, out of the room at, you know, at 550, because uh, it's a lot of times like herding cats. <laughs> if you've done wedding introductions, Sometimes it is like herding cats. You're getting people together. Uh, sometimes they see them shiny and they go run it off. Um, it, it, it's funny how that happens, but it just happens. Um, so you get people out, you get you get the introductions done, the grand entrance done. And depending on how big that grand entrance is, if it's you know uh, just a couple, it's pretty quick. If it's the wedding party a couple, okay, a little bit longer. How big is that wedding party? Is it two people? Is it 20 people? Is it seven people, you know, because sometimes people drop out and so forth and so on. Uh, are you doing, you know, parents? Are you doing grandparents? Are you doing the flower, uh, the flower girl or the ring bearer or any person? Uh, sometimes you have the, the popular thing has been the flower dude. Are you introducing the flower dude? Are you introducing the ushers? We've done that before. And then you go into, you know, after your introductions, you go into your speeches. You know, how long the speeches are, we don't know. Sometimes they're very quick, like the one on Monday. 
the, the, the guy who did the speech uh, for Monday's uh, reception, it was basically a minute. It, it was literally a minute. He uh, uh, had great quick speech to the point, lots of love, very nice. And I would say probably a, a great speech, minute long, very short, kept it very short, very personable. And, you know, kind of a little bit of humor, nothing bad, nothing mean, and made everyone smile. And that was it. The ones on, on Friday were a little bit longer, but again, they weren't outrageously long. And then we had uh, best man, maid of honor, and then uh, both parents, side, both sides of the parents. So the bride and groom in this case, uh, their parents talked. That's great, and not a problem. They they went out and they talked, and you know they 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 gave a speech, and again they weren't long, and that's that's the always the uh, the thing is that how long the speeches are. Sometimes you get people who are nervous, and they continue speaking. Sometimes you get people who don't know what they're going to say. They do it ad lib. Sometimes they just you know they have this long speech. They had to grab hold of their phone and they're on their phone going. Okay, when I first met Bob, you know, they had this huge thing they want to talk about. So that's kind of the thing. That's why you always want to have that speech area kind of loose. But knowing what the facility is looking at for food, knowing the facility has stuff. And again, they had stuff pre-made, you know, salads usually in the refrigerator, a, a chill a cart, uh, some of the food, like soup and stuff like that. Usually they have that soup ready to go if they're doing soup or advertiser, whatever it is. But like entrees, a lot of times they may have a lot of the entrees done and some they may do to order, but if the, some of the entrees are done, they're sitting in a cabinet, a hot box. And that hot box, the longer it's in a hot box, the more the food's going to degrade. So we want to make sure that we know what the facility is doing and how much time they need for things. Do they need a lot of time? Do they need a little time? Are they running ahead or running behind? Is it a complicated menu? You know, um, I will say the, the wedding Monday at the Grand Lux, that was everyone ordered their own thing. The servers came out and they had a preset little menu and they ordered. So it was made fresh to order. And it wasn't that long. We did, then we had, I, I want to say like 30 people for this reception, small micro reception, beautiful reception, great couple, uh, great staff there. And again, they handle very quickly, but sometimes we run into bigger weddings that it's at a restaurant facility and they make it fresh to that, uh, to that group. And when you see that, you know, a fresh meal being uh, made, sometimes it does take a little bit longer. So we have to, you know, look at stuff, go, okay, fine, great. It's gonna take a little longer for dinner because you're making stuff fresh to order. So they have an order of whatever. Uh, some restaurants and facilities have a preset selected menu. Uh, we've run into restaurants um, and venues that basically to have a regular restaurant menu, they hand you the full restaurant menu and has, you know, 50 items on there. Uh, people are ordering, you know, uh, I'm just throwing some stuff out there, like a, a chicken finger and a double hamburger, uh, like, the regular, like the regular eating and it's versus the, you know, it's, it's for the reception, you know. Um, so it, it's, it, that's the thing you're talking to the place beforehand and asking questions is always important. And a lot of facilities, when I talk to them, they always appreciate that phone call beforehand. They appreciate me reaching out to them a week or two prior to asking, how do I load? What do I come in on? Uh, what, you know, who do I talk to? Are you going to be there? Uh, you might point of contact. Um, do you need a copy of my insurance? These basic things with the venue start you off on the right foot because you walk into a venue you've never been there before and you know google i will tell you this google is your friend you can go to a lot of times google and look at pictures <coughs> and see pictures people posted and go oh okay and it's a lot of venues a lot of facilities will post pictures they will post pictures to google and I, when I go to a facility, uh, I will go through uh, on my phone or I'll go off my computer if I download the pictures on my computer, like I usually do, is take those pictures and put them onto Google Maps. 
So that's another thing also you can do to advertise yourself is take the pictures you have taken at a venue, add it to Google Maps, because then people see those pictures and go, oh, hey, you know, Adrian, I'll use you as an example. Uh, Adrian E. was at this venue. Hmm. He's a DJ and he's been there. He knows his place. Hmm. Okay. Who else has been there? Oh, hey, Buddy Mueller's been there. Oh, well, Buddy's a DJ. Oh, he knows his place too. Hmm. Let me go talk to these two and have them understand what's going on. What's up, Aaron? And have them, you know, talk to me about what they're going to do. And you know, they could, then they can look at pricing and packages and so forth. But they know that you, as a professional, have been there before, and they see what you are doing and what you're you're there doing. There's nothing like going into a place and not knowing what's happening. That's why I call and talk to the manager. And again, we always ask, we have a, a, a sheet, uh, Tracy and I have come up with, it's an Excel spreadsheet we've done. And some of the, we ask questions with the bride and group at our, our last meeting. We usually have two meetings. Now, because of the vid, um, we've had our first initial meeting just to get the basics out of the way on Zoom, where we talk to them and tell them about our spiel about what we could do for them. Uh, and ask questions and try to answer for them uh, questions. And then we'd say, hey, you know, think about it and get back to us. When they get back to us, again, we won't go with you. We take the deposit, send the contract. Uh, I use Vivo. So if you guys, I, I'm, I'm going to do a little side note here. If you guys have not done so already, um, the Vivo app, Mike at Vivo, great guy, awesome product. I would definitely give Vibo a talk to, and I gotta get I want to get Mike on here one of these days and have Mike talk about his product because I've been using it now for a while. Now, a couple of things are a little off a little bit uh, for me getting used to it. So it's it's it, and when we off not him his product us getting used to it. So a couple of things are a little different than what we were doing before. We're doing an Excel spreadsheet. But the thing is that, you know, once we're getting more and more used to it and using it more and more, you find how convenient it is. And I could tell you that um, this right here, I have uh, I have two weddings I got to do music for. <laughs> this is my this is my work uh, load for uh, tomorrow and so forth. So but um, the, the the information that we get and it's it's a good amount of information. It is very easy. I don't know if you guys can see that too well, but you can see it's nicely formatted, nice nicely there. And I can go through, you know, all the music here and select. And then, like you know, like I have, uh, you know, give us ten songs you gotta have to hear throughout the night. I we can control what you want to control. But like, you know, I have them pick, you know, give me five songs you got here for dinner. Give me 10 songs you have to have. And, you know, must have songs. Here, here, here this is this wedding is for uh, coming up on the 13th of August. And we're going to meet with them this Sunday. So I got to get the music done. Um, but like, uh, hey, mom, I made it, you know, Patty Disco, Cheeseburger in Paradise, like that right there to me, would be more of a, a dinner song than it would be a dance floor song. And this is something we talked to him about, you know, tear at my heart in sync. So they're obviously in sync fans so in sync backstreet boys, um, you know, larger in life backstreet. There you go. See, so that's the thing is that that's the things you see. And this app helps out a lot. So I have to do a shout out to Mike at Vibo with the app. And again, I got to get him on here, but going through stuff and getting stuff done and getting stuff before you go into a venue but like I said before, is important. And knowing what you have, knowing what is going on, knowing what to do is great. And you know the layout of the place. Again, Google is great. Pictures are great. You can look at stuff, give them that phone call, find out where you got to load in on, where you got to take stuff in, uh, who to talk to, what door to go in. Uh, we ask, you know, is there a table available for us or do we got to use our own table? But the wedding this coming weekend, uh, we're using our own uh, table because we're doing video DJing. Um, the 
um, wedding. Uh, we have a wedding the following Thursday. That wedding, it's we're using the table there. It's a facility we go to all the time, so I know what to expect there. Um, usually, I don't call them because it's the same thing over again. <laughs> it's like a rinse and repeat. So you once you're there enough times, it's rinse and repeat, they, they, and they know what you're going capable of doing. But again, first time, second time, third time, if, if I haven't been there in a while, I'm gonna give a phone call. If I haven't been there, uh, like Friday's wedding, which chapter of the Pines, the last time we were there was back in, I wanna say 2019. So made a phone call, talked to a young lady there who is the facility manager, asked her questions, asked, you know, what is, you know, is everything, anything change? The, the side door in the back still loading area, the ceremonies outside. And, you know, they go, oh, we have a great new sound system. And I just don't want to use their sound system because, you know, who's liable, who if something goes wrong. So I use my own. It's so, hey, we use my, our own. They has, she goes, hey, there's a ceremony we're having there at two o'clock at the ceremony site, which is like 160 feet away from the door um, to the entrance to the building uh, for where the wedding's at. And you just be quiet. That's an important thing. Because I know there's a wedding there going on. I know pulling up, honking a horn or yelling, screaming, hey, Tracy, <laughs> I forgot the, this. You don't want to do. <laughs> uh, you know, stuff like that. And those simple little things like that, giving that phone call beforehand so you know exactly. And I, that's one of the things I ask. Is there uh, an event before us? Because I like to have about three hours of setup time. You know, that way there's plenty of times something goes wrong. I can cover it. I can fix it. I can see what I can, I can supplement or I can pivot. To, okay, fine, great. Hmm, this is not working. Pivot. Let's go to something else. Or if I have to, worse comes to worse. Uh, hey, Tracy, do you mind running to uh, get this or get that? But it, it's one of the things that, you know, we don't want to do that. We don't want to have to run out for things. Uh, and all the years, uh, we've only run out for a few things. But being on top of stuff beforehand is important. The, you know, asking questions, you know, is there going to be a table? Uh, where's power at? Is power right there? Or is power 60, 70 feet away? Are you behind in front of a floating wall? If you're in front of a floating wall, uh, one of the venues you go to, great venue. Um, up in Palatine, uh, a lot of times you're in front of floating wall. And those floating walls don't have outlets because they slide them open and close because they can expand the space. They may have two or three weddings going at the same time. Uh, there's a few venues like that. The Seville is one. Uh, you know, uh, the Cotillion in Palatine, in Palatine is another one. And the Cotillion, uh, if you're in the far back room, which I know we are going to be this year, uh, I'm going to say August or September, with what you come up with there. Uh, I know that uh, about 60 feet, 50 feet is the power that way. And you get to run two out, two plugs and then run it first leg to uh, the first set of speakers and then run more cable to the other side for the other uh, side. And that is just because the fact that it's so far away, you gotta run some you know, power cables. So knowing that kind of stuff beforehand, ask those questions if you've not been there before is very important. But like, you know, the cotillion, I will call and I will talk to them. Just like if I go to Seville, I haven't been to Seville in a bit. They changed owners. I will call. Is it everything still the same? Because facilities change policies, procedures all the time. So as a good DJ and look for that partnership with the facility, you want to call, ask questions. You want to be prepared. You want to talk to them and say, hey, um, is this going on? Is that going on? It, you know, you kind of figure out what you need to talk about. You need to kind of figure out beforehand, kind of write down some questions. What's the stuff that you need to know walking into the place? You know, is there a loading dock? Is there a ramp? Is there stairs? Stuff like that. So you know uh, beforehand. Now, as you show up there, you're expecting a you know ramp, and you have a flight of stairs you got to go up. You didn't know about, uh, or if you have a um, 
uh, a, a vehicle that's too tall to park in a parking garage. Um, there's a beautiful venue in Lamont. Uh, we just went to the Bridges of Lamont and they have parking um, for your vehicle if you're a DJ in a parking garage next door. Well, my Sprinter is nine feet tall. It does not fit in parking garages. So we are like, ah, yeah, it won't fit in there. So they were kind enough and they're like, oh yeah, you park back. We have, you know, just you, near the uh, trash cans on the side in the back, there's a, they have a couple of dumpsters. Uh, you can park toward that back area back there, just pull back, pull back there. No one's back there, nothing's around. Just about 10, 15 feet, 10, 15 feet behind the van is their, uh, you know, their garbage cans. They're like, just don't block the garbage cans. Like, no problem. Uh, and the vehicle is out of the way. No one sees, the, no one sees the van, but it's not far from us in case we had to run out there to get something. And I think Tracy had to run out there and grab one item um, that we're like, oh yeah, we need an extension cord. But it happens. And again, that's that's why being prepared as much as possible. I still called and asked questions, and they needed a copy of our insurance. And then when I sent our insurance to them, they're like, oh no, it needs to be on this kind of format. Had changed formats. I got a hold of my insurance agent. So all that stuff was worked out way in advance. Now so I'm showing up day of going, uh, yeah, this is this is my insurance. Oh, well, it's wrong. We mean it's wrong. Here, this is this is the insurance belt. But no, you need it in this format. So again, asking those questions beforehand is important. And asking, you know, again, now just power, reloading, unloading. Is there a vet before? Is there an event after, like the, the wedding we did Monday? Uh, there was another event coming in at four o'clock. So we had to skedaddle out of there. Our, I'm not sorry, at four o'clock, six o'clock. Our uh, wedding ended at five. So we had to pack up and we were out of the room by five, like 5.30 ish. And I want to share a quick image of, um, and this is one thing that's another great thing about going over to Twitch. And you guys are just joining us. This is the DJ Roundtable uh, show. And you usually have more people here than just me talking. Um, but again, we're still working out everything out because things have changed uh, over from um, over from uh, Instagram over here to Twitch. And looking for my one picture real quick here. Ah, this is the one. So, and the great thing about, again, about switching over to this, I using Zoom as the format, I can then share a screen and, oh, that didn't work right. So, all right, I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, there we go. I can share a screen with myself on Twitch, but not I'm on Zoom, not through Twitch. Hmm. Okay, you know what? I could add. I gotta figure that one out then. That's the first time I ran into that. Hmm. I have to learn the experience. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I have to I have to fix that very quickly. Uh, I could I have re this recorded onto uh, Zoom and uh, this will be up on my YouTube channel. So you have that done so already, YouTube channel is TBM Productions DJ1 on YouTube. And you can go over there and watch this rebroadcast on there. <coughs> but um, I can add a, uh, display capture. Yeah, we could do this. Do this and do this. Zoom in here. Aha. I'll get the hang of this one way or another. <laughs> All right. I'm going to turn 
this display capture on here. I'm going to cut off my picture. We'll capture device. We're going to transition. I'm going to capture off my picture. That didn't turn off anything. Okay. No, nope, there's turned the black background off black. Okay. <laughs> but I'm going to actually shrink down my image. There we go. So you guys can see this. This is um, this is the room here uh, for the Grand Lux I was at. This is a picture I took. And this is from my perspective. Uh, you can see to the right of me is actually the sweetheart table. And then it is the room in me, in front of me. And you can see the guests here. My Molly 5 goes. And you can see my uh, SX2 there. Uh, I do have my... XZ, which I'm going to um, have up and running in no time. And I'm going to shut that off and then open this back, open me, myself back up. If I can get my cursor to grab hold of me. There we go. Well, that's long. There it is big. And let's make it wide again. And do this and do that. Look at that. I'm back to normal. There you go. How about that? The magic of uh, of Twitch here. <laughs> but that gives you an idea of what. Um, what we're doing, what we're seeing, what's going on. And that's an important thing because to get that image and that look with a little bit of uplighting and so forth and so on, it, it, it's, it's, it's some work. And to get that work done, doing due diligence, making stuff is, sure stuff is done correctly and done right from the get-go is very important. So this round table is about creating that partnership with the venue, following the procedures. I, I know some DJs, they like, no, no, I got to do it my way. Yeah, you can, um, but sometimes it's better to make bridges than make walls if that makes sense to you. Uh, build a bridge with a facility versus making a wall because one of the biggest things you have with a facility, especially if you have an impactful event is that facility manager or owner or you know whoever it is the boss there that has dealing with you having them in their mind knowing that this dj is a good dj maybe they put you on a preferred vendor list maybe they have uh djs who they talk about and they go hey this dj was here they did a great job they did this stuff uh, you know they're in out, it, it, it sounded great, people were having fun, the guests were smiling. They go and tell what they could, they see, but the observations sometimes are really key to selling you before you even get a chance to talk to the customer. When you're a facility manager going up to the customer going, yeah, you, you love our facility. You know what, we have preferred vendor lists here. Oh, by the way, here's your preferred vendors. What do you think of this DJ here? Uh, they've been here a few times, they're really good. What about this one? Oh, you were just here. And he or she was doing X, Y, Z, and people were smiling. That's an impactful statement. That's impactful on them. And they remember you because you made a phone call, you made that connection, you follow the rules, you ask questions. They understand you're a professional, not some guy walking in, you know, with a, let me use my tablet here, with their laptop going, uh, where do I plug in at? Like they're a nightclub. And that's not what you want to be. You don't want to be that DJ who come walking in and go, oh, okay, where do I plug in at? Uh, well, you need speakers, you need stuff. You need to be prepared for it. So that is our show for tonight. Um, that is uh, what we have going on. 
And, you know, again, I, I can't thank you guys enough for tuning in and stopping by. Again, this is going to be rebroadcast on to uh, my YouTube channel. And uh, again, I had to thank a lot of people, including I know other people are not here. Again, things happen. It is, you know, this is not a paid spot by any chance. I don't pay for Matt. I don't pay everyone else. It is, you know, a volunteer thing. Uh, we get together to talk and chat to um, share ideas and share thoughts. But um, it's one of the things that we can't do this without you guys. It is greatly appreciated you guys stopping by, tuning in. Um, I have to thank you guys for saying hi uh, and stopping by and just spending a few moments with me uh, and my rant on how to uh, do stuff and how to see stuff and what's going on. And uh, hopefully, maybe you learn something or we pick something up. And that's what it's all about, sharing. There's a lot of great sharing going on. Um, and again, I can't tell you how much um, I had to, uh, again, throw another shout out to this Jackie News for all the information they put out there. If you have not watched them on YouTube, go to your YouTube channel, subscribe to them. They do have a print uh, newspaper. You can subscribe to it very easily. Um, it's a lot of great information there. If you have that done so also already, they have a chill room, which I go hang out in the chill room. I'll probably hang out tonight in the chill room uh, with a lot of great, awesome DJs. Uh, a lot of people you see on YouTube, big names. And it is awesome because you learn so much from these people. And I consider them my friends. And if I see them, and I actually just saw one of the DJs not too long ago, it, we had dinner, stuff like that. It was awesome. And I, I consider him a friend of mine. And you build these relationships with these people. It's awesome. With that said, it's awesome for you guys stopping by. I love using that word because it is that level of, of greatness. And again, being a great DJ, it takes a lot of work to be a good DJ. To be a great DJ, it's that little extra. And hopefully, maybe one day I'll be a great DJ because <laughs> I try to give that extra every single time. And I try to share that stuff with you guys because I wouldn't say I'm the best DJ in the world. I, I know I'm, I'm the decent DJ, uh, but I like to share my pitfalls, the problems I run into. And hopefully, again, you don't run into the same problems I ran into. And that's what it's all about is sharing that knowledge and understanding and, and understanding what's going on and what I've done and sharing that with you guys. And I do this every Tuesday at eight o'clock central time. Um, and again, I, <laughs> I hope next Tuesday we'll have the normal crew in here with DJ Salsis, uh, DJ Billy, uh, DJ Babe Alley, and everyone else. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, bang them around a little bit. And I'm trying DJ Fire didn't show up tonight because usually DJ Fire, I know he um, has his um, landscaping business and uh, summertime he's working late hours. So I understand that. So that's not a problem. And because we switched dates and we're an hour early, that right there, I'm just throwing a few people off. But uh, other than that, I, I hope you guys come back here next Tuesday, 8 o'clock Central Time, 9 o'clock East Coast, 6 o'clock on the West Coast, and uh, stop by and chat and talk. Other than that, you guys have a, a very safe day, safe week. Enjoy yourselves. See you guys next week again. Also on YouTube, we'll, I'll put this on, up on YouTube and have that on there probably next few days. I got last week's I got put up as well. And uh, you guys can watch that and um, again, enjoy the format. And again, I, I wanna get uh, some other people here as well and have them talk about how we as DJs can make ourselves better. You guys have a good night, enjoy yourselves. Thank you so much.